multifunctional systems is is a huge part of what the F9 demonstration is about. The more multifunctional you are in your delivery of services, the easier you can get bigger, better customers and make more money. When you do something special for somebody, you got to edge. If you do a compelling demonstration, you got to edge. You're going to sell that deal. Okay. Um, if um, if anyone isn't uh, clear on what a basic reclaim system is, I'll start with that, and uh, y'all know what a pressure washer is, so I'll go right into uh, right into this. Um, if in a situation like this, where we want to clean a surface, but we don't want to have runoff going to the uh, going to the storm drain, we've got a couple of options. We can use a puddle sucker in a low spot. Let's say the water is pooling up in one area. We could put a puddle sucker down there with maybe a silt filter around it so leaves and sticks won't clog it up. You hook that up to your hose and it'll get sucked up into the vacuum, no problem. Uh, you can use a vacuum berm, which is long and skinny, and you put it across a driveway and it'll sip the water up off the ground as it's running down in a sheet. Um, that works cool. Um, there's a few other uh, similar tools on the, on the market. There's a widget called the vacuum boom which is also long and skinny, but it comes in longer sections. Uh, it works cool on really, really flat surfaces. If you were cleaning a machine in a machine shop, you want to put a corral around it, that's a vacuum boom, because it sucks down to the surface, uh, whereas the vacuum berm is made to just suck the, the water off the surface as it's coming under. Um, once we get the water up into the vacuum, of course, you're going to have a vessel of some kind that may be a 30 gallon or a 50 gallon or a 15 gallon drum or whatever, and you need automatic pump out. The automatic pump out has to work. Okay? I want to tell you the hardest working component, as you know, on a pressure washer is the unloader. Okay? That's taking a beating every time you open and close the gun. Well, guess what? The automatic pump out is the hardest working component on a reclaim system. If you're ever going to get any reclaim system to work for you with reliability, you got to make it work as easy as possible. So there are situations where you want to suck water uphill. Maybe drop a hose into an elevator shaft and suck water out of the elevator. Well, that's suction lift. And the harder you make that vacuum suck, the harder the pump out has to work to pump the water out. Okay? So there are times when you might want to take your auto pump out tank put it down here on the ground because that's six feet of lift that, or four feet of lift that it doesn't have to additionally do. Think about that. Think about what you're making your reclaim system do, how hard the vacuum is working to suck the water up, and how hard the pump out is trying to pump the water out when you're expecting it to be an automatic thing. Okay? Um, when you plug your... Uh, your uh, automatic pump out into electrically driven systems, you need to use a big beefy power cord, give it its best chance to work right, okay? A lot of the phone calls, half of the phone calls that I get about reclaim systems are, are, are fussing about how the pump out's not working and it almost always comes down to how the guy's using it or abusing it. There has to be a check valve on the outlet of the of the pump out so there's no air getting sucked backwards into the tank. You don't want to lose suction. But if the pump is full of air instead of water when it's supposed to be pumping out, it's only going to sit there and run. It's not going to pump anything. And then when you shut off your vacuum and it starts pumping out, and you're going, well, what happened? Well, you let it fill up with water because the vacuum went away. Okay? So think about how your reclaim system is working so you can be successful at it whatever you get. You know, there's several vacuum systems out there. There's some nice vacuums. There's some wimpy vacuums. But if all you can do is the best you can do with what you've got, then at least think about how it's functioning or not functioning and give it its best chance to make you some money. Because whatever you have, you got to get the next step in your business, right? You've got to make another step up and make more money so I can sell you more equipment. Okay? <laughs> Um, we have any questions on that right now? Okay. So the first idea is to get water sucked up. All right. Now, the coolest tool in the industry because of the ability to control overspray is the vacuuming surface cleaner. 
I've been selling vacuum reclaim systems for 28 years because of this capture, not because there's some law enforcement guy out there beating the streets on you, okay? It's because you want to be able to control your overspray if you want to clean the front steps of, of City Hall with the people walking by. If you want to clean the front of a, of a hospital, are they going to shut down just for you? No. You better control your hoses and use instant capture back in the surface. So I've been selling machines for years successfully. The pump outs that work, the vacuum that suck, the surface cleaner that works. <coughs> Also, I want to tell you one well, thing about it here. Um, there is a magic trick using heat with the vacuuming surface. When you're spraying water out at 215, 220 degrees or more, as soon as it hits the, the surface, it wants to be steam. Guess what? Steam's easier to suck up than water is. So if you got your heater turned up, you can reclaim the water easier. Let's say you've got a catastrophe on your hands and the pump isn't, the, the vacuum's not sucking up as much as it, as it should because you had to run that extra 100 feet of hose and oh my god, what do I do? Well, put smaller nozzles or lower the pressure on your system to reduce the flow. That will allow the temperature to go up. When the temperature goes up over 210, 212 degrees, you got steam. Okay? And steam cleans better anyway, so why not? You know, chemical sales want to sell you chemicals, but heat is your best friend. It makes everything else work better, even a reclaim. So vacuuming surface cleaners, puddle suckers, get to know them. They're, they're tools that'll make you money. And as vacuuming surface cleaner does a compelling demonstration. I already talked about that. Every time you get in front of a customer, or if there's somebody looking out that fourth story window from across the street and they see you reclaiming and pushing that surface cleaner along and you're doing a great job, maybe that's your next new customer because you're doing a compelling demonstration and you didn't even know it. Think about what you're doing, how you're doing it. Make the system work for you. I'm an equipment specialist. I've been engineering equipment for this industry for over 32 years with your job site in mind. I've been on the phone with you. I've listened and I've... When I'm on the phone, my guys know to not bother me because I'm not even here. I'm with you talking about that job site. I've talked to people and I've been personally on thousands of job sites. I don't you have feel to feel a little uh, like the privacy has been taken away or what? So when hey, the, is that you? So when, the, uh, when you're on a job site and you're in your at the eccentricities of, of, of your equipment working or not working as well as you want it to be or if you want to go to the next level and go faster, hey, if you can beat the other guy's price by 5% and you're working 25 to 50% faster than he was, you're making more money and you got his job away from you. That's compelling. Take your book. Okay? This is the life you want to lead. You gotta grow your business. You gotta work smart. You gotta think smart. And everything you do has to be an improvement. Or things become mediocre. Other people do a better job than you. And then life sucks. Mediocrity is that way. Alright? So I'm glad to see you guys here. What a great turnout this is. Um, we uh, we always want to feed you new information. I I always change my uh, my spiel when I'm from in front of you guys because I'm always trying to add more things and uh, I, I still want and everyone to know that whenever you have an opportunity to call me because my equipment's super reliable I have time to be the technical guy we're the manufacturer that wants to hear your voice everybody else they never want to hear your voice they want that equipment to last longer so uh, through the warranty period anyway so they won't even turn the heater on they want to sell you more chemicals I want to sell you more machines. I need you to make a lot of money. Okay? So, if you have questions on performance, even no matter what the machine is, you can call me and get answers on how to make, a, make the performance better. If we can put a secondary regulator on your existing pressure washer, whether it's a Lambda or a Hotsey or whatever, and that secondary regulator gives you the ability to adjust between 500 and 2500 PSI so you can do tile and grout, what are you going to tell people you don't do tile and grout because you don't have another unloader? It's a couple hundred bucks. You don't have
it out there. Sell some more jobs. Do a compelling demonstration. And wouldn't it be a nice fat add-on for a guy that wants you to do all of his convenience stores around the state? If you can tell him, yeah, I'll, I'll do it, but I want to do a 24-month program instead of only 12 months because I want to do the first hour of cleaning on your tiling grout, no extra charge. The trick is he's got to supply a couple guys to move the shelves out for him. There's a magic trick for you. Okay, Have him bring in the guys that move the shelves out for you so all you have to do is clean the floor and it's going to take you 20 minutes with a vacuuming service cleaner. And you just got it. You just doubled the contract on the guy? There's a magic trick for you. So, when you have the opportunity to use special tools like the F9 products, when you have the opportunity to go after um, additional cleaning that your competition doesn't doesn't do, or you can embellish, and you know, isn't it nice to be able to go over somebody's clean spot and make it cleaner and then get his contract? Well, same idea with doing stain removal. If nobody's actually been able to remove that stain over there, then why not remove that stain and then you get his everything else cleaning jobs too. Five minutes. You ready to go? Almost five minutes. Okay. Then you fill up. All right, so like I said, the, uh, the most compelling thing that you're gonna do in front of a customer is show him results and whatever your chemicals are make sure you're using them right make sure you're using them safely yep. Yep. make sure that your chemicals aren't screwing up your equipment if you got questions about that you can call people okay um you can call the chemical guy you can call me i'll, I'll be happy to explain to you how to use chemicals in a manner that won't hurt your equipment or at least minimize damage or explain to you why you have a perpetuating problem with your unloader or whatever because, hey, it turns out you're using a chemical that affects the unloader or something like this. There's information that you need that, that you won't get in very many places. You'll be able to go on my website and find more and more technical information on how things break because that's what I specialize in. That's what I've been doing since I was a little kid. I've been making things not break. Website, pressurewasher.net. Pressurewasher.net. <coughs> so, um, yeah, and we are the manufacturer of the Seraco and Bulldog Pro pressure washers. Um, we've designed our equipment to be modular because more and more of you guys are asking us to put performance in a small footprint, um, to make machines more multifunctional. If your job site tells you what it needs, think about what you need to accomplish at the job site and talk to people that can solve those problems with your equipment or with chemicals or whatever you're doing. Um, you drill your questions down and go after the, the hardcore sources. I, I haven't spent all of my months in this, all my years in this industry dealing with managing people pulling hoses. That wasn't my gig. My gig was to make sure that your equipment works right. That's my gig.